What is up, everybody? Welcome into Wing Nuts, 1402 Millersport Highway, Amherst, New York, home of the best chicken wings in Western New York, maybe the entire world. I don't even think it's a maybe. I'm here with Ed and Alicia, the OGs, the creators of Wing Nuts, as we start all of our live shows. And this is a really special live show. We're less than two weeks away from the NFL draft. The Buffalo Bills have a couple holes to fill. Most importantly, maybe wide receiver. We'll talk about that over the course of today's show. But as we always start this one, story time with Ed and Alicia. Yes, it is. And uh, before we go ahead and tell you, I just want to again thank God and thank all the show people and all the Wingnuts people, everyone that works here and all you customers. We couldn't have done it without you. So thank you very much. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Okay, so today's story. Alicia and I were working at the Knights, and we had a customer who would come in almost every other day. He loved everything, especially the wings. He would come in, and one time he came in, and he told us this story. He said, I took my family on vacation to Florida, and my wife and I were on the beach. The kids were swimming. We're minding our business. And down the beach about 15, 20 feet, was another family that was from Florida doing the same thing. Their kids were swimming, and one thing led to another, and we started talking, and the father was talking to me, and he said, where are you from? And he said, well, we're from Buffalo, New York. The guy says, Buffalo, New York? You know about wing nuts? And from that moment on, they were friends. And now he has moved down there, and he has made a lot of friends, and he's trying to tell the whole state about wing nuts. So, yeah, go, John. So thank you. One of the coolest things that people get when they come to wing nuts is, of course, the amazing chicken wings. But Ed and Alicia are always hanging around the bar. They got their stories from all of these <laughs> years to share with everybody. I came in tonight to set up for the show a little bit earlier than usual at 3 o'clock. Me and Ed were sitting at, right at this table here, chatting it up. But, man, we couldn't get more than five minutes before somebody called you away to talk a little bit, little shop, little yes. story time. Yes, and, you know, it's my pleasure. Um, I'll talk to anybody while you eat. <laughs> Sorry. But, <laughs> no, I, I want to share what Wingnuts was, what it is, what it's becoming. I want you all in on it. So. Alicia, I have a question for you, actually. Okay. So are you ever just sitting at home watching TV and Ed just walks up to you and starts going into it? Remember that time at Wingnuts? Do you get story no. time with Ed at home? Well, sort of. I mean, he always asks me, what do I have to say now? What can I say on the upcoming shout broadcast? What do I say? Help <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm always trying to find a story, so... Luckily, there's a lot of them. That's awesome. Let's everybody give it up for Ed and Alicia. Thank, Thank you so you. much for hosting us. Uh, you guys are awesome. All right, we're going to bring Ryan Talbot in here, my tag team partner, the other half of Shout, a Buffalo Bills football podcast. We're here at Wing Nuts tonight. Chef AJ is always cooking up something. You get to come in and get the best wings in town, but he's also always got something new to add to the menu. They got a blueberry cheesecake that I think has got your name on it, mister. You know, they might. I, I am feeling some dessert tonight. Some blueberry cheesecake sounds right up my alley. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take everybody through a live mock draft. And what that means is we're going to make a pick dueling style for every team in the draft. And what we're going to do over the course of the draft is we're going to talk about a couple different scenarios that could play out on draft night where the Bills might get aggressive might want to try to trade up for a spot. And I think there's a couple of spots where we can start to have those conversations. We also have a couple of Shout fans in the house that are going to come up here and give us their hopes and dreams, what they want the Bills to do in the first round of this year's draft. So let's get this thing dialed up here. All right, we got the draft here on the screen. We're going to start it up. Ryan Talbot, you're on the clock. The Chicago Bears... There's a lot of intrigue here. A lot of what? What? What is going to happen? You make the first pick. Yeah, Caleb Williams, no hesitation. USC quarterback. Uh, the the Bears are trying to kind of reset at that position. They've given him a lot more help than they ever gave Justin Fields. So that's the first pick, no doubt in my mind. 
This has been the first pick, it seems like, for two months, right? I mean, th this was a foregone conclusion. I don't even think we have to spend any more time talking about this. The draft starts at number two. But, like, as we look at the top five, for me, if you're watching it through a from a Bills fan's perspective, I think you're really hoping that four quarterbacks go in those first five picks. I think there's a real possibility. Now, the problem is, as it's currently constructed, I think it's the Commanders and then it's the Patriots. Those are two easy quarterback picks. Right. After that, it's going to have to be a trade. So we'll get there. We'll talk about the potential trades. I'm going to have the Commanders going with Jaden Daniels, quarterback out of LSU here in the number two spot. You're up. Patriots. Drake May. Again, they need a quarterback. They tried it up with Mac Jones for a number of seasons. Just didn't happen. Uh, you know, May, there's some criticisms to his game. It's eerily similar to what people were saying about Josh Allen with the accuracy, things like that. But I think May is just a slam dunk pick for the Patriots. Yeah, so I think these are the obvious number, the top three quarterbacks right now. I've seen some mock drafts that have had J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan uh, going before Jaden Daniels, which I think it, that's an aggressive move. I'm not seeing that a ton of places from conversations I've had. It seems like May, uh, Daniels, and um, Caleb Williams, of course, are the top three. I think that the, the Michigan quarterback could be fourth off the board if somebody gets aggressive. The Denver Broncos are a team that I think could be in the mix. Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings as well. If they want to get rid of some of their draft capital, the Vikings have the most, but they can't do that. So the Arizona Cardinals, because in this draft, we're not doing any trades. So I think the Arizona Cardinals take what some people think is the number one or number two prospect is in this entire draft. And I know some Bills fans are hoping that in a dream scenario, the Bills can get up and get him. I don't think it's possible. Marvin Harrison Jr. goes here to the Arizona Cardinals. You're up at five with the Chargers. Yeah, I'm staying with the wide receiver position. Listen, I think that the Chargers are a team that could trade out. I think Jim Harbaugh is going to try to get some more draft capital. I wouldn't be surprised if they went offensive line if they traded down. But you just got rid of your top two wide receivers, Matt. Malik Neighbors comes in, becomes the best friend for that offense, for a great quarterback in Justin Herbert. So for me, Malik Neighbors. Yeah, I like that pick. And I think that Neighbors, from everything that I've read and what I've heard listening to a bunch of draft podcasts, if Marvin Harrison wasn't in this draft, Neighbors would be one of those like once in a generation right. kind of talents. It just so happens that there's there's two of them in this draft. So I think that you're onto something there. The only wonder I have is, does Jim Harbaugh want to come in and really start to build this offensive line? And if he wants to go in that direction, does he maybe hit a, alignment at this spot? And how much does that change things if you're a Bills fan wanting the Bills to get up into the top 10 to get one of these top three receivers? And it would make sense because this is a deep wide receiver draft. So if he wanted to build up his trenches, go with a Joe Alt, go with one of the top, or maybe Alt's a left tackle, but maybe go with a different tackle, one of the top right tackles. It wouldn't shock me whatsoever. Again, it comes down to the fact that I think he'll, he'll want to try to get some more draft capital, rebuild this thing, and, and in the trenches, it's so important, Matt. So next up is the Giants. We'll get to that pick in a minute. Uh, we're going to start bringing up some fans one by one. We're going to go with Mr. Mark, uh, going to make his second pick up here. Come on up here, Mark. I want to talk to you for a minute. Um, Mark is one of our shout insiders, uh, drive, makes the drive all the way out here from Syracuse. Um, you made your debut last month. Now you're back in the saddle again. As you've gone through this process, you've read the mock drafts, you've listened to all the podcasts. Has it changed at all? Where are you sitting here in terms of what you want the Bills to do with this draft pick? I still want to see a uh, wide receiver. I, I'm hoping that maybe they'll, they'll trade up. The, I think Brandon Bean's probably going to wait and see how the draft plays out, see how these uh, top five receivers get. Uh, probably just going to see how they, you know, get drafted in the first couple rounds. Um, or if not first couple rounds, first couple picks. If they start getting picked off real quick, then I think he's going to make a jump and say, yo, I want to trade up. And hopefully, hopefully he'll take someone, you know, like, uh, pick seven, seven or eight, something like that. So the two big names, because Harrison probably seems like unattainable, right? Getting up to four seems like it's a little bit high. So then you have Malik Neighbors, who obviously in our mock draft just went off the board. Roma Dunze from Washington. And then in maybe that next tier, Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. If you had your dream pick of those three, who do you want? Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Oh, definitely. God. Definitely. I mean, I would love to see Troy Franklin, but I think he's a little bit later in the draft. I don't think he's, I don't think he's in that like top five 
top five, you know, top ten picks. I'm thinking he, he might go in the later picks, you know, later in the round, possibly even round two, something like that. But I'm, I'm a big Troy Franklin guy. I want to see Troy Franklin big time. But we got to pick a wide receiver in the first round. Have to. Have to. There you have it. Mark, give it up for Mark. Making his uh, second appearance on the show. There you go, buddy. I appreciate it. All right, so up to the sixth pick. I want to let you make this one for the Giants, Ron. I know you just picked up because i got to work the board here. So the Giants are up, and I think they could go in a couple different directions. Uh, Brian Dable's always trying to look, add weapons, but you know there's some offensive linemen. They can go defense. The problem with defense is I don't know if there's somebody good enough at this pick at six for them to kind of open things up unless they really believe in one of these pass rushers. What do you think the, the Giants do at this spot? Giants, the first position I have, Matt, is quarterback. They made a big mistake giving Daniel Jones a big extension, a big contract. You can at least bring a rookie in here to try to uh, unseat him from that job. So I'm going to go with J.J. McCarthy. I think wow. that uh, a team like the Vikings are going to try to trade up to this area. They need a quarterback, though, so that's where I'm going. No, I think if McCarthy's there at six, that makes a ton of sense. Daniel Jones, I mean, if you're not Joe Shane trying not to get, get out of the Daniel Jones business, I don't really know what you're doing at this point. Next up at number seven, the Tennessee Titans on the clock. Um, I saw whose mock draft was, oh, it was Joe Biscalia's uh, from The Athletic. He joined the show on Monday. He had the Bills trading all the way up to seven because Malik Neighbors lasted to the Tennessee Titans, had them going with uh, Neighbors at number seven and selling the farm next year's first. And that's the thing. If you're going to move up yeah, into the top have ten, to you have gonna... to give up all of that. Um we're going to make the pick here for the Titans, though. Uh, I think it's pretty easy. They have a lot of work to do on the offensive line. I think the value with Joe Alt out of Notre Dame is super high at this spot. You're the Notre Dame guy. What do you think about Alt? Alt is going to be a star in this league. I know the offensive line is not one of those positions where uh, it's not a sexy position, I guess, Matt, but this is a person or a player that's going to come in, start day one, and has all the intangibles that you look for for an all-pro type of player. So here for Atlanta, I think this could be the start for the defensive side of the ball. And I think adding on their defensive line is going to be a priority. It's a little bit too high for interior defensive line in this draft. So I'm going to go with arguably the greatest athletic freak on the edge, and that's Dallas Turner. Uh, I think that's a really solid pick out of Alabama. He's going to go off the board here at number eight. Now we get to Chicago, and our other good friend, Jay Skursky from the Buffalo News, put out his mock draft today. And I think actually this is the, the best laid plan that I've seen because it goes up against a guy that I like in Roma Dunze at number nine. He wrote about this, and I thought it was really interesting. The Bears don't have a lot of picks in this draft. So for the if you're the Bills, you're probably sitting there getting on the phone with them like, do you want to add some day three picks so you could kind of fill some other holes we want to get up and get a, a, a wide receiver. If they stick and pick, though, I do think it's going to be Odunze who comes off the board here. I agree, and Odunze is who I had the Bears taking if they stay put. Uh, the best thing you can do for a young quarterback is get a young stud wide receiver. Odunze, though, in, in terms of those wide receiver prospects, Matt, he screams process in terms of what the Bills are possibly looking for to replace Stephon Diggs. So I do agree uh, with Chase Skirsky if the Bills were to trade up uh, Adunze would be a guy to target, and that would be around the pick that you'd have to go and do it at. All right, number 10 is up on the board. It comes right back to you. Very interesting pick for Bills fans. I mean, the Jets are making a little bit of noise this offseason with what they've done on offense. They've added a couple of offensive linemen with a little bit of an injury history. They have a new wide receiver in Mike Williams that's coming off of his own major injury. So there's still a lot of question marks and none bigger than their quarterback. Do they go offense? Do they add a potential weapon? Brock Bowers is a guy that I think a lot of people are mocking at this point, but there's also been a little put, put, bit of pushback in the last even couple of days in terms of him choosing not to do a lot of the athletic testing at his pro day. Almost makes you wonder if he knows a certain team will pick him or, or says, we're going to take you where we have, you know, where we're drafting, and he didn't want to test. And for me, every time I do a mock draft, Matt, the Jets end up taking Brock Bowers. For Aaron Rodgers loves targeting tight ends. If you can get Bowers, who is the clear-cut number one tight end in this draft class, add him to Garrett Wilson, add him to Mike Williams, it gives him another weapon on that offense. So for me, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Brock Bowers is the pick. 
All right, so Brock Bowers, we're through the first 10 picks here. I got an email earlier this week, uh, maybe it was the end of last week, when I told people that we're going to do this live podcast. It came from our good friend Megan, who has been wa- listening to Shout for many years now. And so she said, listen, I want to come out. I want to make my debut on Shout. She's in the house here tonight. Megan, come on up. So, Megan, tell everybody what you said to me in the email. How long have you been listening to Shout? Um, since before the billboard that was across MNT Bank. That was actually Ryan's favorite moment from the last five years. And do you want to know something cool? I should have started with this when we began the show. Today is the official start of our fifth season of Shout. We started on April 13th, back four years ago. Uh, it's unbelievable. We're over 500 episodes, and you've been there since almost the start. Yeah, pretty much. I used to go to Kenesha, so I saw your billboard when I was driving there, and that's when I started. That's awesome. All right, so the Bills, obviously not on the clock yet. Maybe they trade up into the top 10. Maybe they trade up into the top 20. If you had a dream scenario, what you want them to do in the first round, obviously on the heels of them trading Stefan Diggs last week, where are you at? Where's your head at? Where's your head at? I'm thinking Brian Thomas from LSU. We already have Joe Brady from LSU, so I'm thinking the connection there and hopefully it would work pretty well oh i'm sorry we definitely need wide receiver but it really depends what's left once we get to 28 unless we're trading up brian what or ryan what do you like the most about brian thomas it's the intrigue matt it's the size six three it's the speed i know he was never the number one guy at lsu uh when you have malik neighbors but he has shown time and time again that I think he can kind of be that big play threat. It's what Buffalo needs on the outside. Uh, I, I love what they did this offseason with Curtis Samuel. I love what they have in Khalil Shakir. But if you can get Brian Thomas Jr., who to me is also the number four wide receiver in this draft class, you're addressing that outside need at receiver. You're going to probably have to trade up to get him. So how high are you willing to get up to get him? And if you do go up, how much are you willing to give up? Because that's one of the problems too. Trading up into the top 10 – it sounds great. You're going to get one of the top receivers, but you're going to have to give up a lot. If he's there maybe at 15 to 20, is that the range that you're hoping the Bills can get up to maybe potentially get him? It really depends about Joe Brady's opinion. I think he has a lot of connections at LSU, and they can tell him the honest truth. Is it worth it or is it not? What was your feelings when the Bills traded Stefan Diggs last week? I'm going to be honest. The only jerseys I have are Stefan Diggs and Mitch Morse. So I was a little God. sad for that reason. Um, I'm really 50-50. I think it could be a really good opportunity for the Bills to get someone they can develop and who would be a really good wide receiver number one soon. But it's definitely sad to see him go. And last question, what do you think? I know the draft still has to come. The Bills are notorious for doing a lot of work in free agency in June, especially the last couple of seasons. Has your belief in them being able to win or potentially make a run to the Super Bowl changed with how much turnover there's been on the roster? Or are you as bullish on the Bills as you've always been? I mean, I've always lived in Buffalo, so you have to be a Buffalo fan. It was definitely sad to see Poyer go, but I think we can still pull it out. Megan making her debut and absolutely knocking it out of the park. Give it up for her. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, we got to get a little picture, a little picture time. Uh, my father-in-law does the pictures. Smiling there. Um, Donnie, we're live right now. We're streaming across all the platforms, but we will take a break. When Donnie tells us to take a break and do a picture, we will do a picture 100%. on the spot. All right, so next up, the Minnesota Vikings, like we said, candidate to move up into the top of the draft but they're sitting here at number 11 according to pff quarterback tight end guard center and defensive interior are their top needs do they take a swing on the offensive line at this spot i don't have them going offensive line i have them going d-line jerzon newton out of illinois uh he fits a need he is arguably the best player on the board at that point and if you can't go up and get a quarterback, that's maybe one of the, the best, the next best option, Matt. No, I really like the player. The more I read about him, the more I wonder if he's there at 28, if that's not somebody that the Bills consider as a potential best player available. And I know that's not going to get a lot of Bills fans excited. I mean, it, it seems like for most people, wide receiver or bust. But Newton is a guy that it's an interesting 
from a Bills perspective, whether or not this would make a ton of sense because he's he's going to come into a backup role. Are you willing to spend a number one draft pick on a guy who, in the way that the Bills play defense, you can get him on the defensive line with Ed Oliver. You can make him a part of the rotation. But Ed Oliver is going to get the lion's share of the snaps, and this is a very important pick, and you now have a huge hole on the offensive side. If Newton's there at 28, are you pounding the table for him? Or are you still looking at wide receiver, depending on who's left available? I just don't have defensive tackle high enough to pound the table for any of the prospects. To me, if the Bills were not to go with the wide receiver, Matt, it would have to be for an edge rusher. Uh, and I, I just don't know if there's going to be anyone at that point that would appeal to the team. So here I'm going to go uh, with the Denver Broncos. Probably offensive line would make a ton of sense. But I'm also going to kind of skew away from that and go with the top cornerback in the draft, Ter uh, depending on who you talk to. Some think Quinion Mitchell, um, some think Terry and Arnold. I'm going to give him Terry and Arnold because Patrick Sertan, he's under contract, but he makes a lot of money. So the, yeah. the, the Denver Broncos could look to move off that at any point. Getting younger at the position, I think, is something that they'll try to want to do. And so we arrive at number 13 and the Las Vegas Raiders. And I think. If you're a Bills fan, you're really hoping that the Raiders take a quarterback here because you want as many quarterbacks going before 28 as possible. Do you think it happens? I, I don't think at this point they would try to grab a quarterback. Now, if you trade down, that makes a little bit more sense. I get it. Uh, this is a league where if there's a guy in, in, or a position that you need, don't wait around, don't trade down and try to get cute. But I just don't see any quarterbacks at this point that are worthwhile, Matt. When I look at my notes here for the Raiders, I, I do have quarterback first, but I also have interior offensive line, cornerback, and D-line. So I'm going to take the other top corner off the board right there. Quinion Mitchell uh, out of Toledo. Mac, stand up. All right, next we're going to go to the New Orleans Saints, who obviously have a quarterback, wide receiver at the top of their needs list. Bring up that needs list. I trust you a little bit more than I trust BFF. What do you got for the Saints? Offensive tackle. I think. Yeah. I think the first tackle is going to come off the board much earlier than this. Uh, but you know that's how these things go. I'm going to take the tackle out of Oregon State, Fuaga, uh, Talisi Fuaga. Um, listen, those top three tackles in this draft, you're going to get a bona fide day one starter. Every evaluator that I've read is super high on this tackle class, and I sometimes wonder, like, if the Bills want to get super creative with thinking about two years down the line, and we've talked about this on the show already. Do they ever entertain the idea of moving off of Spencer Brown before this season, adding potentially a tackle if one of these top guys is there? You know, I think of a guy like Latham uh, maybe being there. Uh, Atarius Mims is another guy that could be available later in the first round. Or are you like, run through this thing, let's see what it looks like at the end of the season because there's been so much continuity and you've lost some of the continuity. Yeah, I, I think you want to stay with the continuity aspect of it. I know there are concerns with the back injuries, with the durability. Uh, but last season was as promising as you can get it right tackle. Try to keep that continuity on the right side. Should benefit Osiris Torrance in year two. Colts are on the board. This could be the first after the top 10. If you get through the top 10 and Thomas is still on the board, this is to me the first place where he could go. Yeah, so when I look at the needs, I only have edge in front of wide receiver for the Colts, and I'm going to shatter the, the dreams of some Bills fans. Oh, no. Brian Thomas Jr., uh, go out and get them. Give your young quarterback, uh, Richardson, another weapon and, and see where you can go from there. I'm kind of glad he's off the board because the conversation that we're going to have in about 10 minutes at number 28, I think needs to be had with the idea that the top four are gone and Brandon Bean, for whatever reason, hasn't made a move up the board. So I think you should get to a point where you understand what the options are going to be. And I don't think it's like you know, panic time. I think there's no. potentially some names that are going to be there that you're going to get excited about. We'll see when we get there. All right, next up, we're going to go to the crowd. We're going to bring up uh, our good friend Charlie is in the house. Charlie, get on up here, buddy. Got to hear your take on the Bills draft. And if you're in the house and you want to get up here on the show here today, uh, line up right over here against uh, next to – oh, my gosh, you are pretty tall, man. <laughs> I'm going to have to get this kind of leaned up here a little bit. Get on here. You asked me to come up here. So. I know. You look good. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me just double check and make sure that we got you in the frame. And we do. You, sure you look you great. We, yeah, we do. Uh, so looking have, down at you. That's no, okay. Me. It's okay. I'm used to it. We've been friends for about two years now, yep. and so I'm used to this exchange. Yep. First things first. Sure. Do you have the chicken wings? 
Of course. What'd you think? You got to eat that mic, by the way. I there you go. eat the mic. Yeah, it's got to be right here so they can hear you. I mean, that's that's a lot. I know. Well, I we know. We can do it. We can do it. How are the wings? Awesome. Uh, we got four flavors. We got the garlic parm. We got the barbecue. We got the buffalo medium and the uh, sweet hot heat. Wow. One. So we went, we went all different flavors. Got the garlic parm with the truffle fries there you so go. yeah we got a little... i like being a little bit adventurous on yeah. a saturday night so very good yeah I'm proud of you all right Thank so you. let's get to the bills yeah obviously any thoughts on the first 15 brian thomas is off the board the bills now you know four what was it 13 picks before they pick if another receiver gets off the board at this point it could become panic time for bills fans what do you what are you really going into this hoping the situation is for the bills at 28 or if you really want them to trade up well, talking to Ryan prior to the show, you know, I was telling him, I think you've got the top four wide receivers because I think Thomas has creeped into that top four. Okay. So I think he's not going to be available for the Bills. I don't think he goes past 13. Okay. If he goes past 13, then you're looking at that trade opportunity, whether it's Jacksonville. I mean, they do have a lot of wide receivers, so you could possibly move up there. Um but as far as at 28, I definitely see them taking a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I think the guy that has maybe caught a little more steam, not the guy that Ryan talked about with, you know, Keon Coleman. I, I loved him prior to. Oh, we're going to get everything. into that in a minute. Yeah. Ryan's, Ryan started the Keon Cole, Coleman hype train. When the college season was going and you're reading everything. Yeah, it was amazing. You're like, yes, he's the next Bill. But I think there's somebody else out there I really think they'll aim at. Okay. Drop it on us. Xavier. Wow. Leggett. Wow. Look at that. He built up the drama. I thought he was going to go in a different direction. There's two Xaviers in this draft. Worthy right. from Texas. You have them going for Leggett at 28. At 28. Okay. I think... They're looking at that physical wide receiver. Comparisons I've read of DK Metcalf. Okay. The Bills a couple of years ago had their opportunity, passed on them, thought about it later on, but Seattle had grabbed them. Right. So I think they're going Leggett as a bigger type of wide receiver. Right. Possession wide receiver. But maybe later on you're going to see the burner. All right. So that's what I'm thinking. I, lo I love it. We'll, we'll get to pick number 28, and we'll kind of look at you in the crowd when we break your heart and don't take Xavier <laughs> Legat. No, I'm I just know, kidding. I know, you I never know. know. You never know where you we're going to go. And I think he's part of the conversation. I, I When it first started, and, and Ryan brought up on a recent podcast about Legat, one of the biggest pushbacks I had was the lack of consistent production over the course of his college career. You're really basing this evaluation on one real breakout season. But I do think the traits that you talk about, especially the similarities to a DK Met Metcalf. Now, Metcalf's, an, I think, a, a freakish athlete class of his own. Right. But in terms of what he can bring to the offense, I think you get excited about that. Definitely. And I think, you know, looking at Metcalf, look at the similarities. They, they have it. And I think you wanted it a few years ago. Seattle get it took now. it. Yep. There you go. All right. Let's give it up for Charlie, man. Great job, dude. All right, Ryan. Next up, I'm going to let you make the pick. Hope you're doing your uh, studying in between um, picks here. We got the Seattle Seahawks on the board here at 16. You got Cooper DeGene, uh, corner safety out of Iowa. Uh, Latu, the pass rusher out of UCLA. Byron Murphy, uh, interior defensive lineman. Or Tri Fontenu, uh tackle out of... Washington. Who do you got? I'm going to go with Fonu, and I okay. think they're going to kick him inside to guard. Okay. I think interior offensive line is their top need. He makes a lot of sense for this team. They're getting good value there. Yeah, you're getting really good value. If the tackles last this long, I think you're really excited about it. You know, Jacksonville last week, I might have thought about edge rusher here because of the uncertainty around their Josh Allen's contract situation, but now that they've made him – one of the highest played pass rushers in the NFL, 150. Did you see that one story that ran, I think, maybe on Sporting News? And sorry, it, had, it yeah. had the Bills' Josh Allen pitcher on there. Happens a lot, I think, for some folks. Um, I'm going to have them go. 
What are the needs here? Edge rusher, so, defense. Oh, you yeah, got one you wide like? Wide receiver, cornerback, edge, D-line, interior offensive line. I really like corner or uh, cornerback here. I'm going to go with, where is he? Alabama's Kool-Aid McKinstry. And this is a little bit earlier than I think some people are taking him. And there's a little bit of, I, I, I almost feel like there's two sides that have formed. Those that are really high on his tape and right. those that have poked a lot of holes in some of the struggles he's had against some of the top receivers over the last couple of seasons. But I think you go back to the start of the college season, and people were talking about him as the top corner in his class. And if you can get him at this spot, I think you like the value. Yeah, and, and listen, uh, Cooper DeJean, excuse me, uh, is another player where some teams are going to see him at corner, some are going to see him at safety. But if they see him as a safety, Kool-Aid McKinstry makes a ton of sense for them at this spot. All right, next up is the Bengals, and we know the T. Higgins situation. Uh, I think that they're probably leaning towards bringing him back again. I know some Bills fans are adding mock drafts with T. Higgins getting traded to the Bills. Um, I don't necessarily think that's in the cards. What do you think they do at this spot? Because there still is some needs, and I think they can actually make maybe an offensive line pick here. Offensive line makes a ton of sense for Joe Burrow with the durability, uh, but I do have edge rusher high up on my list for the Bengals and Latu out of UCLA is a player that I love, uh, arguably my favorite edge rusher in this draft, so I'm going to go that direction for the Bengals. All right, the L.A. Rams come up next, and I think tackle is at the top. Mm -hmm. Penn State for Washu, I'm going to go with him in that spot. That brings us to number 20 and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers, I do have wide receiver high on this list, but I'm not loving the board. After that, for the Steelers, I have O-tackle, interior offensive line, and then cornerback. Now, maybe this is a Cooper DeJean situation for them. They, maybe they see him as a cornerback, so that's the direction I'm going to go. All right, Cooper DeJean. DeJean? 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 I always get it wrong. All right, that's okay. Whatever I say, do the opposite. All right, so we're 20 picks through. We're getting towards the Bills uh, pick. If anybody wants to come up and jump on the show, please do so now. Um, you can get in line here. But I actually have one more person that I need to come up here. Jeff Papia, why don't you come up here and make your debut you have to make the debut because it is your beautiful wife's birthday tonight. And and I told her she was going to make her debut, and she told me no. So it's you coming. What's up, buddy? How you feeling? I'm doing great. Yeah, huge fan of the show. Thank you very much for having me on. Happy birthday to my beautiful, lovely wife, Maria. Love you very much. Yep, they're getting after it. It's party time uh, for the Papia crew and company. The Bills have a very important pick coming up in a couple of weeks. Where do you think that it's going to wind up being? Where do you want it to be? And what do you think they need to get done on day one of the draft? Well, here's the thing. If, if the Stefan Diggs trade hadn't occurred weeks ago or last week or two weeks ago, um, I would have said go for either an edge rusher or go for somebody in the secondary. But with that gaping hole at wide receiver one, it's hard not to imagine that the Bills don't use a couple of picks, trade up and find somebody that they think is, is going to step into that role. Have you put your scouting hat on? Do you, you got a guy that you're you're really ready to pound the table for? You know, I don't I don't like to put too much stock into any one receiver individually. Nobody's a given. Even Marvin Harrison, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., who's you know the sort of consensus number one, at least from what I see, isn't necessarily a guy that I think is going to you know in year one break out and you know be a, a game changer. Every draft pick, in my opinion, is a is a work in progress. Jeff Papia, you came on here. You didn't know this was happening. <laughs> I put you on the spot. What are your expectations for the Bills in 2024? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, I, I must say, and, and maybe I'm just sort of like dealing, I'm on the heels of the, the Diggs decision. My hope is that we continue to win the division. I think we're a wild card or perhaps a, a division champion. I do think that we're going to get into the playoffs. Um, my concern is getting over the hump with the Chiefs if, if uh, one more year. Yeah. I think a lot of people share that concern. Give it up for Jeff Papia. Great job, buddy. Yeah, say one more thing. I just want to make a point of saying to everyone that watches this podcast that these are two wonderful guys, but that hairline and that that beautiful physique that Matt has is just, it's... Okay, you should have stopped after the hairline. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'll pay you later, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right, next up, the Bills have very much interest in this next pick at number 21 because you know the the Miami Dolphins have reportedly been uh in conversation with Odell Beckham Jr. Obviously nothing has happened yet. I don't know how much that moves the needle, but the fact that they're willing or um interested in bringing in another wide receiver 
maybe they go wide receiver here. And there's a couple names like Xavier Worthy's draft stock seems to be going up and down. The Texas receiver that ran a 4 2 2. But could you imagine adding that kind of speed? I wouldn't rule it out. No, I wouldn't rule it out at all because if you look at the Miami Dolphins, the first term that comes to mind is track me. They love guys with speed. Uh, ah, chain made sense last year running back. You know the combination they have at wide receiver. If they ever want to move on from Tyree Kill, it makes a ton of sense. But this is a deep wide receiver draft. I'm not going that direction with this pick. What's the pick? Byron Murphy, defensive tackle. Uh, improve the interior. They've had some losses there this offseason. All right. Uh, next up is the Philadelphia Eagles. We are going to go best player on the board. They're going to add to their scary defensive line. Uh, edge rusher Jared Verse comes off the board here. Minnesota Vikings, their second pick, which I don't think that they'll have on draft night because they're probably moving up in the top five. But who do you have them going with here in this spot? I think this is where they would go with the quarterback if they were to stay put. I believe Bo Nix would be the top on the board. Am I correct in that assessment? That's a good question. Let's check. Bo Nix or Penix? Yeah, Penix makes a lot of sense too, but I'm going to go with Bo Nix for the Vikings. Now, do you like Nix more, or is that coming off of from what you've watched, or is that like more the consensus of what you think where, where teams might be landing? I think consensus more than anything else. I do like Bo Nix's game, though, quite a bit. So for me, that's the direction I'm going. All right, so the Cowboys are up next. There's a bunch of different directions that they can go, but I think tackle is yep. starting to... Top Empty need. out a little bit. Yep, top, top need. need there. We're going to go with J.C. Uh, Latham, another Alabama player. And we got the Packers coming up next. The Packers, I mean, I've been talking them up over the last couple of weeks because I think that that's the model the Bills really have to try to yeah. uh, emulate over the course of this draft. If they don't get aggressive and trade up, they're going to have to take two wide receivers, preferably in the first four rounds. It's probably going to have to start at pick number 28. What do you think the Packers do? Packers are going to go cornerback, Nate Wiggins, uh, top corner on the board. All right, next up, the, the Buccaneers, uh, tight end, guard, center. They have a lot of uh, needs on the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, they have their quarterback in Baker Mayfield. I'm going to go with a little bit of a wild card. Graham Barton out of Duke is the first interior offensive lineman drafted. I think he is gaining steam. Now, I don't know how much that is. NFL teams trying to bring down the stock of Jackson Powers Johnson, but it's one of those things where – I think Barton is a guy, he's got that position versatility. He can play center or guard. I really like him in this spot. Yeah, big fan of his game. The Bills have even done their due diligence on Barton. So uh, not a reach at all, in my opinion. If this situation occurs in the way that it has, and the Arizona Cardinals stick and pick at this spot, I think Brandon Bean is going to be smiling because he's going to get his pick of any wide receiver that's left on the board. The Arizona Cardinals have already drafted Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't think they're, they have a lot of needs. I think they're going to go in a different direction. Where do you have them going in this spot? Well, let me just say real quick. He might be smiling, but he also might be like sweating it out a little bit, worrying about another team leapfrogging yep. him. And I know we're not doing trades in this draft, but if the Bills do have their heart set on one receiver, there's still that nervousness about what could happen here. But well, when let me ask you this about that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, because this has happened to Bean where he's gotten burned in the past in this scenario. You, know, you go back a couple years, the Trent McDuffie, Kyer Elam situation. Do you think that there's a if, – if Thomas goes out of the range that he's willing to trade into, do you feel like in this range here, whether it be five or six picks before he picks, is there enough guys to where he doesn't need feel the need to trade up? Or do you think there might be one or two guys that – he feels like he's got to get up because he doesn't want to lose the opportunity. Because I think at this point, there's probably about five guys that I have kind of in a similar boat. Yeah, and, and that's just it. We don't know if there's a prospect that he absolutely loves. But if you sit at 28 right now, you're sitting there, you're saying, okay, uh, Xavier Worthy, Xavier Leggett, A.D. Mitchell, you, you still have Lad McConkie. So depending on what flavor they're looking for, there's so many guys here. But I could see Brandon Bean falling in love with one guy and trying to trade up maybe three, four picks to make sure he does not get leapfrogged. So who do you got? Who are the Cardinals going to take here? Chop Robinson. Ooh, the okay. edge rusher is high on my list for them at this point. Uh, maybe PFF isn't as high on him as, as some of these other draft boards, but he's usually pretty high up there in the first round. All right, let's bring up uh, our old friend, Mr. Greg. What's up, buddy? Get on up here. 
I think he's going to be our final fan contributor of the evening. What's up, buddy? Howdy, guys. Howdy, guys. Now, you go way back. I think you were one of our first shows way back in the day. You got the OG Shout shirt on. He got you a new one today. How are you, my friend? Doing great. You know, looking forward, you know, the offseason. It never sleeps anymore. So it's the draft. Then it's the schedule release. Then it's OTAs. And next thing you know, you guys will be back in the dorms at Fisher and Pittsburgh Dairy and all that on deck. You're speaking Ryan's language with uh -huh. the Pittsburgh Dairy. All right. So you, we were talking a little bit before the show started. And if the Bills don't go wide receiver, you think there's a way that they can maybe go off the beaten path a little bit here. Now, obviously, the way that our draft went, the numbers have dwindled at this position. But what are you thinking? Right. So if we say, OK, they stay at 28. There's no trade for a vet. There's no trade up in the draft. And it's like last year's draft where the receiver, they go, the receivers go quick and they have to make a move or stay. At 28, a name that's really interesting to me is Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama. As one of the other guys said, you know, defensive back depth could be a need. You look at Rasul Douglas as a free agent after this year. Benford's going into his third year. Kair Elam's going into a crucial third year, which under Sean we've seen, whether it be Dawson Knox, Spencer Brown, A.J. Epinesa, that third year, that growth has come into play. When we look at McKinstry, you're talking about a guy, Kair size, 6'1", 195, and he's Sean's type of defensive player. You're talking about a guy who's follows receivers really well, really good with the eyes, um, very smart, very strong communicator on the back end, and something that nobody's really talking about. It's a very skillful punt returner, and there's potential there because we know Shakir can do that if needed, but now with the receiver depth that they have, is that the route that they want to go going forward? And there are some flaws, too. His, um, against zone, he's not as strong. Um downfield maybe not as strong as those shorter intermediate routes but a guy who in three years i know he's only had two picks but a guy who can really grow into being a starter in sean's system when brandon bean in the first couple years of brandon bean i feel like he was really steadfast in his approach where it's like best player available i'm not going to veer off of that line of thinking but have you noticed at all ryan in the last couple of years here we've seen him start to kind of acknowledge the noise outside of the, the building for certain positions. The one pushback I'd have here is like, I wonder if he would fear getting his head taken off. If he would take a cornerback in round one, two years after what's been perceived as a failure with Kyer Elam. Do you think, because I think the logic that Greg uses is sound. I push back on, on Tampa, the, the kid that uh, Kuiper took a couple of weeks ago. TJ Tampa. Yeah. I push back on that, but the more you think about it, there is an unstable nature to the position group moving past this season. So what do you think about cornerback here? And would Brandon Bean push out the noise and go and take make that pick when I don't think fans would be too excited about that? Fans wouldn't be too excited, but it is a sneaky need for this team. A 100% agree. Uh, Rasul Douglas being in the last year of his deal being 30. Uh, the durability concerns that they might have beyond him as well. So it does make sense. I don't see it happening in round one, but I definitely see it as a possibly their day two or high day three pick for the Bills. Greg, great stuff, my man. We appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you coming out. Have a good night. Give it up for Greg. Oh, yeah, we're bringing him on. We're bringing him on. All right, uh, another shout-out, too. My buddy John is in the house. Uh, he's been to two shows in the last three months. He's brought um, flavor popcorn, and it was – it was perfectly fitting tonight. He brought birthday cake popcorn from my cousin who's having her birthday here. AJ, get in here, my man. All right, give it up for the man, AJ um, Giordano, who is in the kitchen all night long cooking up all the good stuff. I told, I told uh, Ryan earlier today I got to look at that, that cheesecake. Man, it looks pretty special. It's delicious. Uh, blueberry compote over a lemon ricotta cheesecake with some lemon zest on top. Yeah, you can't beat it. Lemon it's is really, my favorite. That so it sounds good. amazing. Yeah, it's really, really special. All right, so we're going to make our pick for number 28 here in a second, but give me the lowdown. Give me the thought process. Where do you want the Bills to go if this is the situation where only four wide receivers are off the board, they haven't traded up? What do you want to happen here? We're trading up. Bean, okay. Bean's going to put them on the table, and he's trading up. We're going top 10. I'm saying I really, really hope we get Bean, the guy from Washington. 
yeah, Aduze or uh, Neighbors if he's uh, if he's even there, which I don't think he will be. But I can see us going top ten and trying to get Allen that next five year stud that's going to take us to where we need to go. Are you worried at all that Von Miller just posted a meme on Instagram that shows Brandon Bean walking onto the stage at some type of rock concert, and the the caption read? Brandon Bean getting ready to trade up for a wide receiver. Everything that Von Miller's ever said has not come true. So he's almost putting the reverse jinx on you. It's either going to be we trade up or we trade back. I really think that that's how we roll. Try to acquire some more capital so we can pick two or three receivers that might be in the, the 40s range. The guys from Florida State, Coleman and, uh, you know, Franklin from Oregon. Like, I think those are the guys that we might, if we do trade back, I think we try to get two of them. So either one big play or two pretty good guys. All right, last thing before I get you out of here, let everybody know what you got coming up. I heard a little bit of a whisper that there might be a, a big draft party coming up. What, what do we got on store? Well, we're going to be having an awesome cocktail called the Table Smasher featuring Mafia Sauce. So only way to do a Bill's draft party is with Mafia Sauce. You know, you're going to have to use that stuff. And then uh, we're going to be doing wing specials, pizza specials, sandwich specials all day long, buckets of beer. You know, it's going to be a great time. We're going to be loaded up in here for the first round. Wing Nuts Bar and Grill, 1402 Millersport Highway. AJ, thank you so much, my man. Go Bills. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's wrap this thing up, Ryan. The Bills are on the clock at number 28. What everybody has been waiting for as we've gone through all of these picks, um, I guess we'll start with you. Where do you think the Bills go with this selection? So if they do stay put, Matt, I still have them going wide receiver, absolutely. And I've already heard the name once tonight. He is one of my guys, Xavier Leggett. I see him as a boundary wide receiver. I see him as an explosive player for this offense. You know, you, you look at the other guys, Xavier Worthy, you worry a little bit about his durability, his size, his frame. Uh, A.D. Mitchell is not known for being a hands catcher. He catches with the body. Didn't have a lot of drops at Texas, but more of a body catcher, not something that necessarily the Bills would be looking for. They've done a lot of due diligence on wide receivers in this draft class. My bold prediction, Matt, is that they triple dip at wide receiver in this draft. They, I think the first two picks are wide receivers, and they add another one on day three. Uh, the second receiver may be being Troy Franklin because they've done a ton of homework on him. But if they stay put at 28, Xavier Leggett is my pick. All right, so Xavier Leggett, I've, I've come become much more comfortable with him, and I've also become much more comfortable with Keon Coleman. And I know that you're kind of driving that bus at this point in terms of, you know, liking him at at maybe not this spot, but for the Bills to maybe consider depending on the situation. I think the, a trade back here, going back to my original mock draft, is definitely in play. There's only one wide receiver at this point that I think the Bills should be okay with drafting in this spot. Now, that might change. Again, we look into all of this. We learn more about all of these players after the draft. But I'm trading back in this spot if I have to. But if I stick and pick, I'm going with A.D. Mitchell out of Texas. And this is a little bit out, off the board because I think a lot of evaluators, me, you know, media members, think that this is not, not necessarily a typical Buffalo Bills pick. This is a guy that one of the knocks on him on his scouting report is that he takes some plays off. He's not always super engaged. But check this out from Dane Brugler. And oh, by the way, I'll, I'll spoil a little bit. Brugler's coming on our podcast next week Ooh. to talk about the beast. I'm super excited about uh, that. Great document that he does every year. Tracks the ball into his hands. One drop over the last two seasons, like you mentioned. Grew up competing with three older brothers, and his toughness stands out on tape. Always looking for someone to block. I think the Bills need to look outside of what they've traditionally looked for. I don't think blocking should be at the top of the list. But when I see something like that in somebody's scouting report – I think of like the Bills and like what they think of that part of your game. And some of the other guys, even Xavier Leggett, who is this, this tough player, this yards after the catch, the blocking isn't something that I think a lot of people are raving about as part of his game. And I don't think that it should be a big part of the evaluation. I think this is more of my how the Bills view it kind of pick. And I like A.D. Mitchell's athletic profile as well. His athletic profile is off the charts, Matt. And when it comes to Mitchell, one thing to remember for Bills fans is as much due diligence that's been reported on this draft class, one player that the Bills weren't tied to a lot last year was Dalton Kincaid. Right. The, the, obviously, the Bills' first-round pick at number 25. They held a Zoom with him during the final week of 
uh, meetings. They met with him at the combine. He was the final meeting that they had at the combine as well, but they weren't really tied to that player. So knowing the need at receiver, maybe the Bills are doing this all over again. And with all these 30 visits, Zoom meetings, maybe they're trying to keep Mitchell pushed away a little bit because he's the guy that they covet the most. And I think you have to play that game at this stage. Like there's so much reported every single day about the draft and all the noise that's out there, the more that you can kind of throw other teams off the, the beaten path. And the Chiefs, at just four picks behind the Bills, obviously needing a wide receiver. We know what's going on with Rasheed Rice right now. That's a situation where you want to keep teams off of their um, – uh, yeah, off the set. Now, what are your thoughts on Ladd McConkey here? Because to me, he's the toughest player for me to really pinpoint. I think his skill set is interesting. I don't love him at this spot. I know some draft evaluators think that he's going to be a slot in the NFL. Others push back and say he can play on the boundary. What would you think if this ends up being McConkey at 28? So McConkey makes a lot of sense in that he has the versatility to play inside and outside, just like what they had in Stefan Diggs and what they have in Khalil Shakir. But I also wonder if the Bills just want a true boundary wide receiver. And I'm not sure McConkey is a true boundary guy. He is someone like you said can play slot, can play outside. I think he does have the game-breaking speed to get open downfield. He is certainly someone that fits the process, the culture that Buffalo looks for, and he's the first person that told you know Kay Adams they've met with him multiple times. Right. So they're doing their homework on him. I would not be upset if Lad McConkey was the selection. All right, that is going to wrap us up from Wing Nuts in Amherst, 1402, Millersport Highway. Uh, we had up to 1,500 people watching this stream live tonight. Get out to Wing Nuts. They have tons of specials, like AJ said. All of this delicious food, delicious desserts, amazing beers. We are going to have you covered in the lead up to the draft the next 12 days. We're going to be jam packed on the Shout Bills podcast. For Ryan Talbot, I'm Matt Perino. We'll see you next week, everybody. Take care. Have a good night.